On today's episode eight, and by complete coincidence, because I couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery, it's International Women's Week. And what better way to celebrate this than by having on a hero, ex-Fulham football club player, pro skater, and now Route One's TM. I present to you a conversation with Amy Ram. Roll the tape. Who are you guys working for? Who is this? It's uh, Skate Wine. Oh, beautiful. Did you say Skate Wine? Yes, yeah. sir. Hello. Welcome to the Wine Club. I think it's episode eight, and we have our first female guest, Amy Ram. How are you, Amy? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm, I'm good. I'm a little bit hot, actually. It's quite warm. It suddenly got warm in February in Mexico. It was freezing in January, and now it's really warm. Oh, really? Yeah. Here. Like uncomfortably warm. Yeah, well, that's why that's why I'm here because I don't like the cold. Yeah, nice no, day there. So, how are you? What have you been up to? I'm good. I've actually just come back. I've actually been in Southeast Asia for a month. Lucky me. Nice. Um, but yeah, we were, we were there at the beginning for a uh, Route One trip um, to what were we doing? We were like opening the um, first skate park that they built there in Laos. Make Life Skate Life built um, a skate park in the capital Vientiane. And Route One is a like partner charity with Make Life Skate Life. So okay. we, I invited us all out there basically. <laughs> So for the opening of the skate park, but we also, you know, had um, Griff with us who shot photos for the skateboarder's companion. And, you know, we've, we didn't have a filmer, but we just um, went and, yeah, like opened the park and just skated the ta- the city and enjoyed ourselves. When you say we, how are you, how are you involved in being out there? Well... Route One have uh, are like joined to a thing called One Percent for the Planet, okay. and that means that they have to do certain things to um, benefit the planet, I guess. But one of them is to have like a charity partner, and they were looking for a charity partner. And I just come back from Nepal. I hadn't just come back from Nepal, but um, I went out and volunteered with Make Life Skate Life in Nepal and i suggested to route one that they partner with make life skate life because i'd had like first-hand experience with the charity and that was in like 2001 and then like we've been donating stuff to their projects and money and um, equipment to like their projects but this project like stood out and i'd heard about it and i was like we're going because i mean Lao is just it's not like going to spain or somewhere like that i was like i mean Lao is the most beautiful country one of the most beautiful countries i've ever been to and yeah it was just like i just knew that we had to get out there and we and did so, and so uh, for the listener you are the, the tm right for route one yeah i'm yeah i'm the tm for the pro team so that is like sam beckett rianne me, Thackeray, and Sharky. And then I actually look after Diggs and Lola as well. They're on the national, but I try and include Diggs and Lola in everything that we do. But obviously the the trip to Southeast Asia wasn't going to be appropriate for tiny kids. <laughs> two amazing skaters, two amazing up and coming skaters. Yeah, Lola was actually in Dubai anyway. And I actually asked Diggs and his dad, Ben, if they wanted to come. But I think because of school and stuff, they couldn't. So That makes sense. And so when did you, when and how did you end up TM for Route 1? Um, so Griff, Griff was my TM. Um, and he was obviously just doing his own thing for the last half of it. He was... You know, he was really busy shooting photos and stuff. And he he eventually left. And as soon as he left, I just said, I want to, I, I, I just said, um, I want that job. And, um, you know, they didn't really blink an eyelid at it when I said I wanted it. They gave it to me pretty quickly. They did say that there were other people who wanted it. But I think Richard, the boss of Route One, he kind of knew that there need there needs to be like more women in the industry. And he does like, even though he doesn't skate, he still, you know, has like really good intentions. 
and he like he pretty yeah he pretty made he made the decision pretty quickly which i think was 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 pretty decent of them because i had no experience tming i say i had no experience i what i mean i basically was like an assistant tm for like three years um when i worked at factory media and because we looked after like the nike sb account so i say i had no tm experience but really i had loads of tm experiences but without like having a label on it if you see what i mean yeah definitely and I, from meeting you in hastings i'll bring up the story again but from meeting you in hastings i remember uh i went down with i think it was steph i think i met with steph um, and a couple of other guys. And I remember I hadn't met you before. I'd seen you on the social media. And I remember that there was carnage in that mini ramp. And no, like there was very few understanding the snake rules. I mean, people were going in one after the other and not really, there wasn't any like coherent <laughs> queue. But I remember you dropped in and some guy snaked you and then he went into you. And I remember you just picked up your board and threw it at him. And I was like, oh my God. Uh, but for me, that was like surprising for two reasons. For, for one, for like, in that scenario, it's scary to get in anyway. And then on top of that, you're female. So it's even more like intimidating, I would assume. Um, and then you also had that that energy and that get go of like, hey, that was my turn, which I absolutely, I love and admired. And I can understand from meeting you firsthand in Hastings all those years ago to why you would be such a good fit for, for a team leader because or, or a team manager because you don't take the SHIT word. So... Yeah, I try not to. No, but you're also you're also good natured with it. Yeah, I feel like people think that I'm a team manager before I was a team manager. So um, I'm not saying I want to do it for the rest of my life, but it's definitely something that I knew that I needed to try. And yeah, I think route one and like being a TM for a shop is not like. It's not like top top of the skateboard world being a TM for a shop, but the but being a TM for Route One, I think, is a little bit different because they create opportunity, like which is good because I wouldn't want to be a TM with like zero budget and like a shit team and like do you know what I mean? Uh, I, you know, our riders get paid, we get lots of like benefits riding for Route One, so and we all know that like Route One you know they do well although you know they they're not skater owned but you know they do well they're a business and um at the end of the day they give us opportunities so you know um i think people have seen that recently and they've like stopped hating on them so much because they've seen that like they like have a good team and they treat their riders well and they pay us and they give us all the product that we could ever wish for and they create trips which is what every skater wants and needs is the opportunity to travel i think with the introduction of the olympics people have started to have an understanding at least in skateboarding and core skateboarding if there's ever a term of the understanding that you need more than just skateboarders to to evolve and develop skateboarding I, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. ha, ha, what's from when you started skateboarding to now, and with the with the fact that Route One might not be skate around and the prejudices before that many years ago, how do you feel that that is? How do you feel that skateboarding is now compared to ten, fifteen years ago? I guess at ten, fifteen years ago, you know, I was I was I was young. I was too young to like know what the industry was like. Do you know what you mean? Like, in fact, all I knew as a like as a as a, an eleven year old skater girl was Bay sixty six and you know the shop in Bay sixty six and then the, like the VHS videos that came out and that we bought from the shop. Like, I didn't know what it was like to be a like. I don't even think females really existed like in the industry like that long ago. Do you know what you mean? It's only in the last five years where you've seen like the OG skaters taking um more or like positions in the industry like Alex Y, who's like I don't know what she does, but she works for the N she works for NHS, right? So she's she's the girl that does commentary for the skate uh, for the Olympics as well, right? Yeah, she's like a brand manager for NHS. And she's like, she even has a title of like head of like female. I don't know. She's got some sort of title that never existed before. Do you know what I mean? 
it's like women like her that you know did skate 20 years ago that are you know that are in the industry that need to be really i feel like you know as a male skater lots of male skaters like you know develop onto like roles in the industry and that should be the same for the women as well otherwise there won't be any progression for women skateboarding because if if you're a female rider and you have a female i feel like female riders will benefit from having a female tm do you feel that there's been a lot more progress now with female skateboarding than there was when you started yeah yeah i mean when i started it was just me and sam bruce who was skating bay 66 for like a long time you know so yeah i I remember just being like me and sam literally being but again we were like too young to even be bothered by the fact that we were the only girls in the skate park you know but obviously it's changed massively because you go to a skate park now and it's almost like there are more girls than boys i think from sam bruce and yourselves uh, from what i've met uh, and know of you your characteristics would definitely shine through in that instance i think where as other people boys included would be more intimidated with going to somewhere like bay 66 because it is intimidating going to a skate park with lots of skateboarders some that are extremely good and then you get them yeah. like oh i can't even drop in uh, and i noticed yeah. d- d- are you part of the girl skate night that that runs in bay 66 now I started that night. It was my idea to have that night. Yeah, I think we're like six years deep into it now. So, um, and that, yeah, that happens once a month. But since starting that night, I, I noticed that every every other indoor skate park in, in the UK had a monthly girls' night as well. Um, and not to say that, like, it was all me, blah, blah, blah. But I think just having, like, a girls' night in a skate park was, uh, is like... It is really important to have just one girl's like a month. It's not like a big deal, is it? Um, but like you can see that there, you know, there's lots of them now in in every skate park. They they have like a trans friendly and and like all women girls nights, which yeah, I, I think are important. And you know, it's not like the guys hate on it. It's just like one night of the month, they just get turfed from the skate park. From my point of view, when I first, like, when they started getting into lots of different skate parks, I was quite critical of it because, and I was critical of it because I encourage everybody. But what I have to remember is everyone's not me. And so yeah. I, I felt a little bit like, and I shouldn't, and I've got over it, but I felt a little bit like, oh, come on. You know, we're not yeah. scary people. You can skate with guys. But that's unfair. And I really like, the I, my belief in it has really changed because, one, if you're a girl skater and you only want to skate with girls then that's really cool. And if you just want to go to a skate park, enjoy your girl night and don't skate with guys, that's cool. Like, I don't know why I thought that was a bad thing, but I think that I really love skateboarding because it's inclusive and because like, I get to, when I went to Hastings, I was skating with you and I skate with Lola and I skate with George. Uh, and when it first started becoming a big thing, I was like, it felt like there was going to be this like split or this divide between like having girls nights and then having open sessions where girls weren't turning up because they were scared of the guys but now seeing the development of that it's been so positive yeah i think like it's just like an easy introduction into skating if you're like a girl and you're a bit intimidated to come to like a normal session and you know that like the energy is going to be like not not that intense and the vibe is going to be nice you know half the girls i see at the girls night they're just sitting chatting having fun some of them don't even skate you know i think it's just the vibe of the night is really nice and yeah it's just like an on intense energy i just yeah that's how i would sum it up and yeah to anyone that that thinks that you know those those nights are like exclusive for girls or whatever they just need to come and like just see just see what it's like and you know it's it is mainly just beginners because these beginners are like too afraid to you know turn up to a normal session because they don't know you never know when you get to a skate park what the what the energy in the session is going to be like yes like like I'm, my girlfriend's flat now and she lives literally on the corner of stockwell and i all i'm always passing stockwell but you never know the energy what, what the energy is going to be like at stockwell you know sometimes like today i walked past it and there was like two people there and it was really chill and it's like it would be fine for anyone to go there and skate. But, you know, the, you know, the other day I went and it was like Jake Snelling and those, and they were filming blokes. Intense. So you just don't really know, but you know with the girls' nights that 
the energy is going to be chill, basically. Uh, definitely, over the years, it's really, really, it's really changed. It's really changed my perspective, and I think I'm quite sensitive. I, I take everything like it's like, oh, it's directed at me. But actually, even if you go down to like beginners, like open sex beginner sessions, like I always compared it to. I came from a small town in Biddyford. Uh, and we go to Mount down to Mount Hawk. A lot of people from Biddyford wouldn't go down to Mount Hawk because they would be really good skaters, and it is an intense environment. So they just hang out. And I think this is true for a lot of small town skate parks: is they won't go to the bigger skate parks because they're scared of the bigger guys and they're scared of the bigger skating. And like even Dean Lane, for instance, it's sometimes you go there, it's gnarly. So yeah, I think yeah, having yeah. beginner sessions in places that are structured like Mount Hawk or like Bay Sixty Six is really, really important. Like you said. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you skate primarily at Bay 66 when you started skateboarding then? Yeah, yeah. So I started skating like on my street and then this this one of my friends who lived on my street, he started skating and then we discovered that like PlayStation was only like a bus and a tube away and then we just like went started going like every weekend and then it just became like every every weekend and then yeah and i think like we became like a little bit obsessed with it and as a as a kid um well as like a, a, a 10 or 11 year old you know my my mom like gave gave me and this guy max who i went to the skate park with like independence you know they were like, they were like okay you're fine to like go there on your own here's money for the entrance here's money for lunch and then like we were gone for like six hours do you know what you mean and to have that as as an 11 we, I was 11 I wasn't 10 I have that as like an 11 year old maybe I was 10 actually shit yeah I was <laughs> to have that as like to get on the tube we used to go to Hammersmith get the bus to Hammersmith have McDonald's breakfast in Hammersmith then eat our breakfast on the tube to Labrick Grove and then get off at Labrick Grove and we were there from 10 till 4 like Saturday and Sunday, do you know what you mean? And my parents knew that it was a safe space, you know, it is a safe space, Bay 66, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, it's designed to be a safe space. So, you know, um, I spoke about that in, in my, in a previous interview, but yeah, I think that, that, yeah, as a kid to have that kind of like independent, independence is amazing to be that independent at, at you know, a, a 10, 11 year old is something special when you say we who did you start skateboarding with this guy max on my street who doesn't i mean he definitely doesn't he he doesn't skate at all but i think go we you know we used to go together and then when, when we we're there we'd have loads of other friends do you know what I mean we used to see up we, we we used to see the same people there you know some of the same people that i still see when i go there now like trev yeah it's a long time ago i guess wasn't that yeah. As an eleven-year-old girl, what made you fall in love with skateboarding? What gave you the passion that's that's grown into being TM for for Route One, one of the biggest shops in in the country? I don't know. I just loved it. I think I was always. I mean, I was very sporty as a kid, and I would just do every sport, every sport possible. But I feel like that. I feel like the skating. I can't even. Do you know what? It's weird because I actually can't even remember like starting to skate. Do you know what you mean? <laughs> you know you remember your first drop in and blah 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 but like you just got on with it and like if as a kid if you enjoyed it and then you, you would continue with it and if you didn't enjoy it and you were bad at it you would stop so i think there's a there's, there's that line isn't it yeah if you if you know you aren't balanced or coordinated and, and you don't enjoy like the social aspect of it do you know what you mean then you do just stop and the kids that don't stop they just love it you know with with all the negativity recently towards like fe like men male and female skateboarding and like having these spaces for, for women starting skateboarding how was it for you as an 11 year old and how did you feel with skateboarding at Bay 66 was it welcoming or did you feel that there was sometimes there would be days where someone might say something rude to you or you know drop in in front of you because you're a girl did you ever get that when you were 11 do you know what i think i had a lot of balls then i don't really think <laughs> about anyone seeing it hastings like, that doesn't surprise me 
I used to play football as well, so I feel like just me just being like a sport, I don't know. I, I guess because we used to go to the beginner sessions from 10 to 12 on Saturday and Sunday, and then you progress to like the older sessions, you know what you mean? So again, like I don't feel, I don't feel like as a girl at that skate park, like I stood out. I just, I was, as a kid, you don't think about any of that. Though, and you just you? got on with it. Fun. I just remember having fun. I think that was like a big thing for me. Was that like skateboarding, like meant fun to me. Like it didn't mean like anything else. And although you were progressing like organically, like I never had. My mum never came to the skate park only to pick me up. Like she never came and watched. And never had that like pressure of like you need to be good. Like this is your career. Like I just. We, you know, I think then it was just like a hobby and it was fun and like, and that's, and that's what it was. You know, I feel like maybe, you know, it is a bit different now because of social media and like the Olympics and like this kind of, um, this kind of like soccer mum attitude with it as well. You know, parents on the sidelines, like, you know, I've seen, I've seen parents in skate parks, like standing in the middle of the parks, like, shouting at their daughters or sons i'm like get the hell out of here like fuck off like let this kid fucking have fun because that that i think at a young age like skateboarding should be no nothing more than fun and when it when the parents cross that line it like just it really pisses yeah pisses me off i think that's why i like skating stockwell so much because there aren't that there isn't that and that there isn't any of that there do you know what you mean whereas like if you go to clapham there's just like Lots of like instructors, parents, kids, which just don't get that at Stockwell. Do you think that the pressures of the Olympics then and having skate mums and dads and it being a little bit more fratty is, is a negative yeah. thing now in skateboarding? To be honest, I just kind of like choose to ignore it because it does sadden me because I hate to see that like skateboarding is like forced upon kids or like I don't like to see kids feeling pressured at that age with skating that's just not what it should be but again like social media they see these big stars with lots of money and doing really well and traveling the world and etc and you know that's you know that's potentially what they want their kids to be like but yeah i just feel it's a bit cringe to be honest yeah i do cringe out yeah <laughs> uh, and when you started skateboarding who was your inspiration? Was it Max that you skated with? Oh, yeah. Max wasn't an inspiration of mine because I got better than him very quickly. So <laughs> he probably stopped because he was probably feeling a bit sorry for himself. I would say uh, Lois Pendlebury would be like, I remember seeing like the cover of Cooler and I think, oh, my God, like girls can look like that. And like she skates, she skates so good. And... Yeah, I was like, definitely had like a crush on her. Like, just because I'd never seen like a female to have that sort of attitude and that sort of style before. Like, she literally, and she only had one, two, <laughs> yeah. she was like, you know, she was just a badass bitch. I mean, she still is, because she came and worked at Factory Media with me. Well, not with me, but we were like on the same floor for like a year. And it literally took me like, 11 months to say hello to her. I was like so intimidated by her. I was like, fuck, this girl's so cool. Even at that age, when I was in, like in my early 20s, I still like didn't have like any role models or like in inspiration that I could like, apart from her and like a few others. I remember seeing like a picture of Letitia Buffoni like doing like a melon grab or whatever. And I was like, whoa, that's so sick. Like. When she was young, had a headband on, and just there was a few girls that I could, you know, that you could. And I watched all the Girls Skate Network videos to see who was who, like Alex White and Vanessa Torres and Amy Karen and yeah, all that, all that, all that crew were like, wow, what the hell? Like these girls exist because they were like the badass girls that who I wanted to be. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd forgotten about Lois. I first met Lois at NAS exactly the same time. She was missing yeah. a tooth. I I skated vert very inconsistently, as as you may now know. Um, and I met her at NAS, 
And I just remember being like, this NAS vert ramp was the 14 foot vert ramp. And she's dropping in, she's doing 50 50s and high airs. And I was just like, whoa, this is insane. Yeah, she was mad. And she was so, she's so good at street skating as well. So, like, just like an all rounder. Yeah, that, I remember that cooler, um, that cooler front cover was like, fuck, I need to be her. Well, I want to be her. I want to dress like her. I want to, ha- you know, I want like, her sort of attitude towards like skating and life and you know just like fuck you i'm out here nobody's like getting in my way she knows all this so i'm not like embarrassed to say or anything <laughs> someone i need to get on the podcast i had actually forgotten about less does she, does she still skate she does not skate no. i know she I got hard she... into snowboarding for a bit didn't she yeah, she's had a bad hip, I think, and now she like lives in the mountains with like shitloads of sheep and like four sheep dogs. But you should get her. She would be really interesting. She's got really interesting views on like skating now compared to what it used to be. With that in mind, do you think social media is positive or negative for the skateboarding space these days? Um I watch all my videos like on a big screen or on my laptop. Like if I was to watch, like, I, I would watch like friends' parts and stuff, and I wouldn't really look like I, I'd see that it was like online via social media. But I'd always like go and like watch it on the big screen and like sit down and and then and enjoy it really. But yeah, I guess like there's definitely again like the c word, the cringe word, like a lot of cringe people out on out on Instagram, and like they inspire me not to post anything. Really, I think I'm like the, I think my like I'm at I'm the age of like we we understand social media, we post, but we're not like full on with it. Do you know what you mean? Yeah, yeah, I think. I do know what you mean. I feel that a lot of people probably listening to this will be like, oh, that skate wine's cringe and I've posted stuff that's cringeworthy. But I've only ever done it to try and be comedic and have a sense of humour with skateboarding. A lot of the stuff that I've enjoyed, like jackass and stuff. However, this past year, uh, definitely a number of things have happened where I've just been like, do you know what? There's, There's a tendency, I think, in skateboarding now, especially now there's so many different groups, so many splinter groups that there's a lot of like the mainstream, there's a lot of um, conflict. And now I just, I I prefer, you were saying about sitting down and enjoying a film instead of the the TikTok three second clips. And and that's why I've started doing this is because I prefer long form content. Do do you like short form content? No, I, I would rather just like sit and enjoy something rather than also with the Instagram thing, um, I feel like you know, you enter a zone in your skateboarding career where if you're going to put loads of effort into filming something, you want someone with a decent camera who's paid to do, do you know, who's paid to endure, like, a three-hour battle rather than, oh, I, for me, I could never, like, aunt somebody and waste their time filming, like, an Instagram. It would have to be quick. It would have to be something that I can do quickly. I just, I feel like when you're asking somebody to film something on your phone and you're taking ages with it, it's a bit cringe as well. I feel like I've entered, like, a stage of my career where if I'm going to get filmed, it's with a professional cam with a film professional filmer who's got a professional camera and it being part of a of a video so yeah i think when i was like you know five years ago you know i was putting so much effort into just like instagram and now i'm like i've converted into like i will only endure a three hour battle if you know it's for a specific project it's so funny you say that because somebody yesterday, and I've got no ill intention with this, but somebody yesterday at, at the local skate park was asking me to film them. And they and they, they did eventually get the trick when I left, but I filmed them for like 10 minutes and they didn't get this trick. And I remember thinking, I, lo- I love that. I love going to a skate spot and all your fit mates filming each other and getting the clips for Instagram. I do love that aspect of it. But there is a slight aspect of narcissism, of needing someone to say, oh, that was a good trick. And I realized I was there and I've stopped taking my GoPro. I've slightly veered away from vlogs. I want to do stuff like this where I'm interviewing the person. So there is an aspect of like taking yourself back. I I feel in my 30s, taking a step back 
and actually having an interest in what other people are doing and filming what other people are doing. And dare I slide in a promotion to myself, but I've got into professional filming now. I help with uh, Sean Goff documentary and I, I've got a professional camera back in the UK. And I was going to say, if you ever needed a filmer over the summer, then I'm available. But I've really got into that aspect of filming other things and filming other people and experiences and building stories. And I think that that's another part of skateboarding that I feel slowly going the other way with longer form yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, definitely. TN position, how yeah. was Laos? You don't pronounce the S, it's Lao. Oh, is it Lao, is it? I apologise. No, Lao. No, no, How no, is Lao? You learn, you learn something every new... Lao, yeah, it like went way over my expectations, which is lovely. Well, I didn't really know what to expect, but um, yeah, I guess I threw myself in the deep end in terms of like it being my first like abroad trip um, TMing, but at the same time, like, being a TM, you're just you've got you've got the money, so you know, like <laughs> there's there is a lot of questions. Where are we going? What are we doing? How are we getting there? Where's where's the toilet? We need water. Blah blah blah. But you know, I took. I mean, what? Who is it? Sharky, Rihanna, Thackeray. You know, who are twenty five over? So you know, if they ask me shitty questions, <laughs> I would just tell them fuck off. You know, the most. They would, like, most of the time, they'd be like, can I have money? Can I have the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? Um, but because it wasn't, like, a, a skate trip where it was, like, we there was a filmer and a photographer and we had to create, like... Content. A, a content, like, a video for it. So it was, it was a different trip to what, like, Thackeray and Sharky were used to. It's You know, it wasn't about... It's not about... It wasn't about us. It was about the skate park and the charity and us going to the opening and, like you know seeing um you know skating with the locals and you know for the locals to witness like Vaccary and us all skating around they were like their minds were blown their jaws were on the floor and that was really the main reason why we we're there we also delivered like we also brought over like 70 kilos worth of skateboards and stuff like that that was another big reason why we went um, to donate the boards and stuff because they have this like skate program that they run after the skate parks are built. They have like what they call the loaner program, which is that they they have donations from Route One or whoever, and they um, they run like skate classes, free skate classes every week. So yeah, that was like the main reason why we were there. So it like took a little bit of time for like um, the Jordans to realize that this trip wasn't about them because every skate trip they've been on was about them them getting the pictures, them getting the shots. I was like, guys, there's no pressure here to like, you know, we're here to like enjoy ourselves, to like soak up the experience. You know, we obviously want to get the pictures because Griff is here, but you know, Griff is such an amazing photographer anyway. So I wouldn't say like we like skated like 24 seven on that trip. Like you would, we like we would have done if it was just a trip like purely for the video, a video. We were there for the charity really feel like they everyone really enjoyed themselves and like and you know we we got like a full featured article in uh, skateboarders companion so we got the job done but it wasn't like uh you know it wasn't like any other trip that they'd ever been on so it was good for the riders to see you know the other side of skateboarding as well like the the charitable side the you know the giving back side because when we were there, it was actually like the world championships in Dubai or whatever. And in the contrast of like what what those, because Lola and Sam Beckett were there and we were there, we were in Lao. You know, like there's so many different sides of skateboarding. And obviously Thackeray's done the Skateboard GB stuff. So I feel like opening his eyes a little bit to like another side of skateboarding, like a rewarding side, a giving back side. Uh, but in this at the same time it still gives him the opportunity to travel to go to these places because you would never go there on a normal skate trip do you know what you mean not unless you're dedicated to the cause and i think anybody seeing thackeray and sharky re and yourself skateboarding it's amazing so to be able to have that ability in something like the is it community project with with the skate park in yeah. Laos, it yeah. is, is amazing uh what's been the toughest thing about being the tm out there i think like just overcoming i think southeast asia is like 
it's quite gnarly anyway. Like when we first got there, we the first day we got there, it took us like 20, 25 hours to get there. We took like three flights to get there. Um, so we got there, uh, you know, when you, when you go that side of the world, you actually like can really suffer from jet lag, which I completely forgot about. Um, I think it's better going to like where you are, like the West, but East is gnarly. So jet lag basically fucked us like for the first five, six days, like none of us really slept at all. Like we'd come down for breakfast at like 8.30 and be like, did any of you sleep? And we were like, no. The first day we got there, we went straight to the park, got way too overexcited, skate, skated the park for like eight hours. We were like just exhausted from every, all the traveling and stuff. And then, yeah, I rolled my ankle towards the end of the session, which I, I mean, I rolled my ankle a lot, so I wasn't like super upset about it. But then the next day, like me and Rianne were, li like Rianne was like coughing loads and we had like really bad headaches and oh, fuck knows what we had but then griff was like shit and, like he had the shits um <laughs> so the, yeah the second day me and rianne actually were just in bed all day oh. um had like crazy headaches and rianne was like puking everywhere and yeah we were like me and her were like pretty dead for like two days and then everyone was just feeling like a bit dodgy from the food and like a bit dodgy from the jet lag and the lack of sleep like it was total exhaustion when we were trying to sleep at like 12 at night it was like three in the afternoon in england so with it, like our brains were like fully awake until like seven in the morning and then we'd have like an hour but you know when you're trying to sleep and you just can't and you just start going mad don't you so we yeah we were all like fully exhausted throughout the whole trip i would say we were like fully exhausted like you know when your body is just like all fucked from the fly and like so yeah that was a little bit of a challenge and again like having to explain to the team that like you know we're going to the skate park we're meeting the locals like we're gonna meet the builders like we're gonna hang out with the builders like and they were like oh Oh, I want to go check out the sport and I was like okay no first we have to go to the skate park like that's our priority that's why we're here everyone like got photos and we skated you know we we skated a lot I wouldn't say we skated loads we, we, we skated enough but again like our priority was to like hang out with everyone and be there and like and skate the park and and in fact by the end of it like Jordan Sharky they they like had made really good friends with the builders which i think is always really important because the build without the builders of the skate parks you know they wouldn't be where they're at it's like all these worlds like intertwining which was really nice and uh, thackeray made really good friends with one of the dudes and he wants to like s skate the whole the whole of japan to like raise money for the next project i don't know it, it just inspired them in men in many ways um, just to see like another side of skating. I think people don't take into account the change in, well, having a long haul flight and then the changing time and then trying yeah. to skate is so difficult. Yeah, yeah. And then the heat as well. So we came from like minus five to like plus 30. So I guess that was like a learning lesson for me. But like I, I was last in Southeast Asia 12 years ago when I was like 19. So I don't remember any of it because I was pissed anyway i was drunk throughout the whole trip so it was like a totally new experience like I, you're going to a city where you have no idea what, what what to do where to go how to get places but actually having the builders there they were they knew where all the spots were and stuff like that and they they, they helped us around get around the city and because they've been there for three before. I was going to say, how was the transport there? Because the transport in Mexico is very different to the UK. Yeah, yeah. So there's no like buses or tubes or trains to get around the city. It's literally like just tuk tuks. The country had only really opened its borders like 20 years ago. They none of them really speak English. It's a very like yeah, it's a communist country. So they didn't have any like um, tourists there since yeah, they opened their borders in like the early 1990s. I didn't so, know that. 
it's a very yeah, it's a very developing country and it borders China, so it's got a lot lot like Chinese investment in it. I mean you almost sometimes feel like you're in China. They built a railway running the whole way through the country. Lots of like interesting things to learn, like when you when you travel somewhere like that. Definitely. Even if you have traveled to somewhere like that, me going back to that side of the world, I learned so much about like because I did spend three weeks in Thailand after as well because my partner came out and met me in Bangkok and then we like traveled around Thailand and stuff but yeah that side of the world is amazing amazing and what was the best thing and maybe the most memorable part of the trip I would say like just um because obviously I knew about make life skate like uh, make life skate life before and I know that the, the the managing director Arne, and um, kind of just like introducing the riders to that world it was was really nice to to get them to see what they do and like the effect that they have building these skate parks in these countries that you know almost have nothing. But Laos got um, already had an amazing skate scene, so. If you like go onto their Make Life Skate Life website, they don't just build like random parks in random places. They build skate parks that need it and already have a community there. Yeah, and for the the riders to meet the builders, and it was yeah, it was beautiful just to like mingle all together with with everyone. And I knew it was just going to be like a new experience for the riders. So I think that's it's always quite nice when you can. I'll be interested to hear like the side of the like how they what they thought of the trip basically because i haven't really i know re, re, i've seen rianne since but um but thackeray's still out in japan and sharky went to sri lanka after so you know the fact that they they went and traveled after which 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 is, was really nice the fact that they just like made the most that you know thankfully they had their flights paid for and they you know they wanted to stay that side of the world and take advantage of like the trip and use it as an opportunity to like go to different places with that in mind you come from a professional skateboarding background who was your first sponsor and have you had in your skateboarding um a dare i say career the ability to go traveling before you were tm of route one Oh, I traveled a lot before. Like I traveled a lot. Was well, as a young child, my and, like my parents loved traveling, so we we went off and had like crazy holidays for like Kenya and like Bulgaria and like just random countries. My parents would take us to. I would say I've traveled to over like fifty countries. So I guess yeah, with skateboarding, obviously I I, I try and always travel as much as I can. Like with with skateboarding in like with an, an skateboarding involvement in the trip, I feel like going over there just to you know go on holiday I don't know why I just have to like have like some sort of like I don't know bit of skating in there yeah bit of skating in there or purpose have a purpose but I did sit on a beach for two weeks afterwards but like knowing that like I'd done something before do you know what you mean but yeah with skating I guess like my first sponsor was probably like my first real sponsor was um, like Dickies started like sending me stuff and then my first real sponsor was Vans for sure yeah that was like five years ago so like 2017 like Mana just started giving me and Helena shoes and then yeah and then I guess like the whole thing started with like female skating at that point it was like oh like th- like people were like really interested in female skateboarding and then you know it's been growing since obviously so I guess I w- you know I lucked out a little bit in in that sense like fans ha- ha- had no females on their Europe team so like they probably were like looking at the list of like European riders and didn't see any females in there and and, and I guess like right place right time a little bit and they needed they needed like female representation and i remember we did like an international women's day video for them and yeah and then everything kind of just you know went went from there did you go on any trips abroad with vans yeah yeah we did in 2019 we i think we did like over 15 trips yeah that was a mega year because we did like we did like a women's tour with them where we went to like five different cities and we did like workshops and stuff in Europe then we went to South Africa in the summer then we went to we did the Indo trip the Indonesia trip at the beginning of the year and then yeah the year before that I was in Dubai I've traveled I mean yeah l- luckily I'm, I feel so grateful and this is that, all with Vans this is all with Vans yeah wow 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a mega year for them because they'd, you know, they'd realised that they, you know, haven't really been supporting female skateboarding and then they went in on it. So, yeah, I mean, 2018, I went on the Dubai trip and that was like the first mixed trip that they did with me and Fabi and then there was like Fana and some other Europe ride, European riders. And then they did the Indonesia trip, which was their first ever all-female trip. And that was like an international one, had all the international riders on it, like Fabi, Breezy, me, Helena. I'm so lucky to have like that, to be involved in female skateboarding in that period of time when, you know, we it went like... <laughs> yes. It accelerated so much. And now I think like it's still going like this, but I feel like people know about it now. Whereas like six, seven years ago, people were like, whoa, what's this? What's been your favorite trip or most memorable trip with going skateboarding and going abroad? I'd been on like, well, I went to Palestine with Skate How in 2016. So that obviously was like so interesting going there. Um, I've been to like not quite gnarly countries actually. And like when I went to Nepal with Make Life Skate Life and we went like 2021 when it was like, when Nepal was like on the red list, it was like, yeah, it was gnarly, yeah. It was like in full lockdown. Every trip has been so different, but I'd say like the Lao trip was pretty much up there in terms of like the experience. But again, like every trip, like the Indo trip was like ridiculous. Uh, the South Africa trip was amazing, but I had a fractured shoulder, so I wasn't even skating, but that was just um, so interesting. Like, they've all been so different. Which one was the one that had the film premiere that I went to in the House of Vans London? Yeah, that was the, the Indo trip. The, it was on Fresh, uh, wasn't it? Right, okay. Yeah. That was the first time I met the Mexican um, female photographer. Norma, Norma, Norma. Yeah. Right, that, that makes sense. Yeah, so I've just... I just feel grateful that, you know, I've been, uh, I'm lucky enough to be involved in female skateboarding in this, like, in at such an interesting time when it was like, it was accelerating, the growth was like really interesting to watch. But now, you know, it's not really that like surprising when you see like that Brazilian girl do like a kickflip, back, like kickflip back Smith down a rail. But it's still like fucks with my brain a little bit when I see that. That's the standard we're talking about now, you know. It's that's the level. That, that's the level that female skateboarding is at. And it's literally like we're years away from it being so normal to see like only years away from seeing like really like tech tech street stuff coming out of like coming out from female skateboarding. Like you'd watch a video. I don't know even now but we we are yet like waiting for those young girls to like reach their teenage years like lola and like and yeah that's going to be like amazing to see and i'm lucky enough to not feel competitive about like that well just, we're now like, we're now past that competitive age <laughs> yeah, yeah. i wouldn't not, i wouldn't I, I almost wouldn't like to be like a young female skateboarder at the moment because like i don't know like there's a lot of pressure i think a lot of pressure and like you have to be so good to stand out whereas like before you kind of stood out because you were just you were you had a good style and you escape and you skated well and like you dressed well and you you i don't know you presented yourself well and you had a cool character you know and now it's like no 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 you have to be doing kickflip kickflip backsmiths down handrails now do you know what you mean because I, I was talking about this with rianne it's like I know that I never even think, like, I don't even like handrails, but, like, I know that, like, that stuff is not ingrained in me. It's not something that I was doing, like, at, at a young age, because it's not something that any girl was doing. Do you know what you mean? And I don't have that, like, I don't have that, oh, I, need, I need to be able to do that. Do you know what you mean? It's, I, I guess one of the things is, is that female skateboarding has got a lot more competitive now than it was maybe when you first started yeah exactly and it was all about when when i remember when like we me and helena traveled to america and um we skated with everyone like leo nora it was like in 2017 we like did like a west coast tour and we you know we were the, and it was just the community that was amazing then because it was so small 
it was like every female skater in the world was like at the wheels of fortune but like the early ones if you wrote down who was there it would be like a star studded like lineup do you know what you mean but then it was just such a small community that everyone just like knew each other and like appreciated each other and enjoyed like the different styles of skating that like you brought to the table i know i wasn't the best skater there but i know that like everyone had like their own different styles and there was no like oh she's better than me no 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 there was not none of that who's your favorite inspiration and possibly number of skateboarders now who inspires you now to get out and get on your board i wouldn't say like i i i get inspiration from anyone to be able to to get my board and go out i feel like i i feel like there's there's girls that really stand out to me like not just because of their skating but like their overall attitude um so like fabby and um i've got to say i'm like a big fan of nora skating as well um and just like this the hardcore like Lots of the girls that I met when I went to America, I can't even, I've, there's there's too many of them to name, but like, I always, yeah, I don't know, Fabi, I guess, I would have to say Fabi, Fabiana Delfino. Yeah, oh, she fun. just put out that Santa Cruz part, and she's just like solid skater, and like, she skates everything, and she's got really good style, and you know, she doesn't go down like the biggest handrails, she actually doesn't like rails, because I know Fabi well. And the, the one thing I like about her is she's shit scared of rails and so am I. So I think you can like, I, I don't know, you can like, you pick your favourite skaters because they like skate the same things as you and they don't Similar do styles. Like, they do like the Niger tricks and you're just like, oh no, like I can't even, like that, that's not skating. <laughs> do you know what you mean? Definitely, definitely. But again, with Nora, with Nora as well, like, again, she's, like, transition skater, but, like, when you see her skate street, it's so sick. I think, like, that, that, that style of skating, I really like. Massive fan of Nora. And I only heard of Fab... It's Fabiana, is it? Fabiana, yeah, Delphine, I, yeah. I'd only heard of Fabiana because of that Vans video that I watched when I went along um, and saw you, yeah. Helena, and Lucy. And since then, obviously, seeing her progression... What was it like skating with her then? Does she get you egged up to try things that you wouldn't normally try? I, we, I met Fabi like when I went on that like tour on the, on, on the West Coast. Yeah, we've been really good friends because we've got the same sponsors, don't we? We've got like, we're on Santa Cruz and right. we're, on, we're on Vans. We've, yeah, we've been really good friends for a while now. And we went on that Dubai trip together. And in fact, like that Dubai trip, they said, they invited me on it because it was like a Europe one, and that and I said, I said, are any other girls going? And they were like, no. And I was like, I'm not going if I'm the only girl. And then I said, can Fabi come? And then Fabi came on the trip. And then yeah, we've been on loads of trips together. So I know her really well, and she's like such an amazing human, such a nice, nice person. And she lives in Florida, and her skating always stands out to me. I don't know whether I'm being biased. But because I can, I've seen it in real life, you know, what she goes to through to get her tricks and that inspires me. You know, you've got like the Fabby in you telling you like not to give up, do you know what you mean? She'll always right. like tell you like not to give up. And she's like a really strong, like independent woman who doesn't take any shit from anyone. And she knows her worth and she's like very business minded, you know, because I know her that well. I would say she like is an inspiration for me even though yeah she's she is younger than me but she's just got like it's this badass style that like doesn't want to take shit from anyone like regardless i've not had the pleasure of meeting her but he, yeah can you not try and get on the podcast can you not tell from her skating that she's just like badass yeah i i never thought of it that your characteristics show through in your skateboarding but it, yeah. I guess it does. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure it does, yeah. So the the question that I was meant to ask at the beginning of this, um, yeah. which I didn't, and it was meant to be the, like, break the ice question, was, and, and I'm really interested, if you if you see yourself as a beverage or you're at a bar and you're going to order a drink, what kind of beverage would you describe yourself as? Um, well, my girlfriend's standing next to me laughing. Um... <laughs> maybe she could, maybe she could describe you as a beverage. <laughs> 
Yeah, she well, she calls me two sip Sally, so I get drunk <laughs> quite easily. So um, I would say like a, a light beer or like a nice mojito. A, yeah. a light beer, making sure that you don't get too tipsy after two sips. Yeah, 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 two sips Sally. Um, yeah, I'm such a bad drinker, literally. If I had like, honestly, like I'll we'll have be having like one beer together. And I'll have like three zips, and my like my grin will suddenly just be like non-stop. So I'm a sh- shit drinker. <laughs> I do I'm enjoy sorry. it. I like I like I actually like I'm a really good fun drunk, but but you just can't drink I, too much. Then I cross the line. Yeah. Thinking, How are your hangovers? Well, now they're bad. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> no, seriously. No, I don't. Bother. I I rarely drink now because. A, like, the next day is a write-off. And then, I don't know, I feel like you get to an age where you're, you're like, you just want to... If, if you're going to spend the day in bed, it's because you're ill. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're sick. And then, I don't know, having it, being hungover is just boring. And, like, oh. You lose a day. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't want to lose days. Not, not at our age. Right, straight away. Let's go. Uh, okay. Questions from Instagram. Yeah. And I'm so pleased because there was like a space. I Mexico City time difference is a bit strange, and there was a, I posted it just at kind of like the time where everyone's going to bed, and I was like, "Oh, this is a really bad, just for the algorithms and people seeing this yeah, story." Yeah, yeah. But then you shared it, and instantly we had lots of of questions. So straight in from Sarah Porter's daughter, we've got um, from S M Y G F underscores. Biggest inspiration in skateboarding from when you were younger, which is good because I didn't actually touch on this too much. Biggest skateboarding inspiration from when I was younger yeah I didn't have any you didn't have any you just loved skateboarding that's the thing there were no role models and there was no there was barely internet like I didn't I didn't look up to anyone like I literally would just go to a skate park skate 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 go home wake up the next day skate 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 I I wouldn't like honestly because there weren't yeah there was no access to like role models it was only until I was in my late twenties where I was like, "Oh, there's other." So you didn't even base your style on anyone else, because that's something that yeah. groms usually do. They'll watch your style and they'll be like, "Oh, I like that style," and try and m- mimic it. No, that's why I don't have any style. So I haven't mimicked. <laughs> okay, I quite like that because actually, when I was younger, I couldn't afford sidewalk, and I barely same thing, barely saw any skate media. And the only people yeah. I did see skateboarding were around me, like locals. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, the only I was I used to play a lot of Tony Hawk. So I guess like Elisa yes. Steamer, she was like I couldn't even really see what her face looked like because it was all like you know Tony Hawk's two on a PlayStation one. You know, she looks a bit like you. Like you can't like it's all pixelated. So it's like. I would say like Elisa Steamer was like the first female pro skater that I'd even heard of, and that was because like I was playing her. On Tony Hawk's, she's one of my yeah. favorite characters. There's a lot of favorite characters I had on Tony Hawk's, but she was one of them. Uh, next in, we've got Han dot fr one. Oh, that's my sister. Which of your nephews do you think do you think with most will most likely take up skating? Han kiss. Well, not her kids, unfortunately. He's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to air that? Yeah, you can. Um, so it'll be Max, my younger sister's um, son. How many sisters um, do you have? Two. Two. Do you have any brothers? Um, no brothers, no. No brothers? Two, a oh, wow. sister and an older sister. And they okay. both have two two kids each. Next in, we've got the lovely Keep Rolling Company's response. For you, oh, I, yeah. and I, I love this. For UK girls... Does she think there's a gap between the level of street skaters compared to bowl skaters or, or ramp skaters? There are up and coming girls that I've seen that are really good on the street and have like good potential. But I guess they, like Miriam, Miriam, she skates both actually. So yeah, big up Miriam. Like she's actually like really solid, like in both street and um, transition. But yeah, there is, I don't know. Cause Lola's like Lola's like the bowl inspiration. Then yeah, like Josie, you know, I'm not sure how much she skates at the moment, but she's like she was like really good at street. I think there's like equal. I think it's equal. Uh, yeah, 
I, when it was asked, I was like, oh yeah. But then thinking about it, um, and I've now, my names have now gone from my head, but there's a girl from Exeter. Next in from Keep Rolling Company, uh, do you get a potty mouth, swearing, ball throwing, etc. if you can't land a trick? Yeah, of course. She's, <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> I've the worst potty mouth. And actually, when I was living in Spain, I would only swear in Spanish. Puta madre. Uh, how long do you live in Spain for? Uh, like a year and a bit. Okay, that's why you were speaking Spanish to me earlier in the DMs. And I was just like, no lo sé. I have no idea what you're saying because my Spanish, even being here for four and a half months, is still muy mal or malo. Next up, we've got Yak Thumba, the Warriors response. Just want to let her know she is one of the best souls I've ever met. Miss you. Uh, Ram, miss you. Oh, I think he was one of the builders in... Um... Uh that's a really yeah, far away focus in distance. I know exactly. Yeah, that he's one of the builders in um in Laos. In Laos. And, he, and he was there in Nepal. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Next up, we got Laura Levin's response. When are you gonna come skate some street in Manchester with a emoji? Ah. Oh, when it gets above minus five here, <laughs> I'll start leaving the house. No, honestly. <laughs> Which it will be colder in Manchester. Well, no. No. Sasha O to the R's response. Favorite, favorite skateboarding destination. <gasps> oh, um, well, I would say like going to LA. Like you are a bit like mind blown by like the skate scene there. It's quite, it's quite unique, yeah. But then you know the trips to like crazy countries were pretty awesome as well, like Palestine and Laos oh. and Nepal. So different, isn't it? But yeah, uh, LA is pretty fucking crazy. We went and skated like that metal skate park, that really small shitty metal skate park, and like Eric Coston turn up, and like we were just like, what the hell is going on? You know when you're just like you skate and you're just like, well, there's there's pros everywhere. I think that's like I don't know, it's yeah. cringe, but at the same time like it's an experience I'll never forget. Final question comes in from Matt. I, I, I hope I haven't missed any questions and I apologise if I have. Final question comes in from underscore Matt Hunt's response. Ask about when she played for Fulham Women's FC. Oh, I think that's Matt Hunt, the filmer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, yeah, I played for Fulham for 10, 10 years um, when I was, yeah, when I was like from the under 10s to well I worked my way up to like the first team when I was like 17. So you're good at everything you do then? I'm sporty put it that way. Did you was that paid or was it? No so I was in like the academy so like it was like training twice a week and then um match on a Saturday you know playing at the club so we were at club level so wow. we had like amazing training facilities we had like coaches we had physios you know, we got to train where the men's team trained. So the stand, it was like the standard was like really good for so, women's football at that time. So two things. Did you have to choose between skateboarding and football? And were you yeah. skateboarding during the football time? Yeah, no, I had to choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was taking up too much of my time. Because I got really serious with football. So it was like my mum said, like, which do you want to do? Because... So then I did like stop, eventually I just like kind of stopped skating and then I had to, I was playing football. Ah, so you had a hiatus from skating for a little bit then? Yeah. That's oh, why I'm not like, yeah, 10 years. No. Yeah, oh, I would so you, say like. You, you totally stopped skating when you were playing football? Yeah, yeah. No, I'd say I had like eight years off. Uh, and when did you get back into skateboarding then? When I, I did like two ski seasons and then after that I came back to London and I just started skating again and it took me like it took me a good like four years to rebuild what I'd learned before like get the muscle memory back what year and was then, that then was that when I saw you at Hastings that you were like getting back in yeah yeah I was just, like easing my way back into it yeah 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 that makes sense that makes sense yeah that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that makes because I, I I remember starting seeing you on social media and then I saw you at Hastings and I was like, why have I not seen this girl at other yeah, yeah, events? Yeah, because like, but yeah, I guess like I was lucky because I learned a lot when I was young, right? And I like learned how to skate tranny and I like 
and I skated a lot when I was young so like I just when I picked it back up it didn't feel like super alien to me I'm going to finish there. We did the questions. There's so many more questions I want to ask you, so I'm probably going to have to get you back on the podcast. Uh, Thank you ever so much for being on the podcast. You've been an inspiration to me. Um, I have looked up to the way that you present, hold yourself as a person, and I'm ever so grateful for you being the first female guest on The Wine Club. Yeah. I I was meant to say, I might have to reconnect. Did you have any shout-outs that you wanted to do? Yeah, I guess, like, I would have to do, like, the obvious is sponsors so like santa cruz alan glass at santa cruz who is an amazing tm and um i am really grateful for him actually because he started flowing me boards way before i was good enough to be flowed boards and that kind of gave me like the inspiration and then vans obviously um for you know putting me on the team and then Rue one for um like the team managing role and um and then yeah and then obviously my girlfriend because i'll get in trouble if i don't mention her because she cooks for me every night um and all my friends and my family really amazing i have to say thank you to your girlfriend of course (laughs) <laughs> I have to say thank you for your girlfriend for taking so much of your evening. I didn't, well, I did expect it because I thought actually of all the people I've interviewed, I'm friends with you, but I actually don't know too much about you. So I had lots of questions for you. So oh, okay. well, that's a good thing. Saved it. Yeah. I mean, I still got loads more, but it's a good time to, to wrap things up. So yeah, again, yeah. thank you so much, Amy. That's all right. No worries. Thanks, Rob. Without your moustache. Oh, my girlfriend won't let me have a moustache. I miss it so much. No, no, no. Your girlfriend's right. I miss it so much, but Not yeah. like a normal person. <laughs> and weirdly, I was meant to get my hair cut today, but I think she messaged to say that the guys can't do it now or something. I need to ring her. Um, oh, my, my hair's... hair's fine. That's the why moustache. I'm wearing a hat. The moustache was weird. The hair was fine. Oh, I miss my moustache. And I've got, I've got moustaches on my trucks and it doesn't even make sense anymore. Oh, no, I prefer talking to you without the moustache. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here somehow. Like it, like had food in it and spiky, and I was a bit like, you know. Yeah, but you don't have to kiss it, so it's fine. Yeah, no, damn right, I didn't have to kiss it. <laughs> That's why I always, I always find it funny when people like get annoyed by someone's appearance. It's like you don't have to, you don't even have to look at it very long, like. Yeah, well, I would have had to look at it for an hour and a half. So That's that true. Is. So this has made yeah. your experience a little bit nicer. Way nicer, yeah. <laughs> and if anyone's listening to this on like Spotify or Anchor or Amazon podcasts, I haven't got a face for radio. So a face for TV, isn't it? No, I've got the face no. for radio. I can't even get that joke right. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, work on your jokes as well. <laughs> anyway, right, absolute pleasure. Back. Thanks so much, Amy. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you again to the girlfriend. Bye. Bye. Buenos dias. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. See. (laughs) Thanks, Amy. (laughs) Wow, that was Amy Ram. I was really looking forward to that conversation. I haven't even managed to touch on half the things I wanted to ask her, but it was a really good, really good conversation. I hope that she gave me a little word beforehand and she didn't want all the usual questions, so I had to try and mix it up a little bit, which is quite difficult only being two months into this podcast experience, which is very, very difficult and time challenging, but I'm loving it, really enjoying it. Thank you, Amy Ram, for your time this evening in today's podcast. Hopefully, you, the listener, have really enjoyed it. I certainly have. Again, future guests coming up, uh, Lizzie Armento, Sean Goff, We've got Tim from Flatspot Magazine. So many coming up. Charlie. We've got Charlie, the filmer for Joe. So hit the subscribe button or whatever it is on the podcasts. Uh, Give us a review. Thanks ever so much for listening, tuning in, and we'll see you again next time. Episode eight, first female interviewee. Thank you, Amy Ram. Who is this? It's uh, Skate Wine. Oh, beautiful. Did you say Skate Wine? Yes, sir.